Hi, I'm going to be creating a new MCC project in MPLAB extensions for VS Code. So uh, MCC has two content libraries, uh, MPLAB Harmony and MCC Melody, which we happen to be using in this example. So in VS Code, um, Control Shift P opens a command palette. MPLAB narrow, shows all the different MPLAB commands and what are we going to be doing today? Well, we'll start off by create new project. And then we're going to launch MCC, open MCC. Note that there's some other options here. Uh, configure associated project. And actually later as you open the project, you'll see that there's even creating standalone configurations. All of those options we're going to handle in a separate video on multiple MCC configurations. OK. And then what we're going to do is use the data visualizer to verify that our example is working as expected. So new project, my project, just going to specify a custom location. So I happen to be using the Q43, which is sitting on a Curiosity Nano Explorer. I'm not actually using the Explorer board here but I will be using the proximity sensor in the multiple configurations video. So for now, Q43, that is toolchain. And as the project initially opens just a .vs code, we'll have a basic project configuration file there. And as the project is fully opened, okay. you'll see that you'll also have a build and a CMake folders being added. Generally a good idea to wait for those to open before you open MCC. OK, so we're going to launch MCC, create a new configuration, um, just the standard one inside the project, and proceed with default values. OK, standard um, MCC Melody Builder view. And we can save a little bit of space here. And what we're going to use is an example component, example. And in this case, we're going to use the timer example. So we can see there are two examples here, toggling a LED at 100 milliseconds or switching frequency between 100 and 500 milliseconds. This one actually changes the timer period at runtime. So first one. Right. And now there's an implementation, polled or interrupts with callbacks. So what does this mean? The behavior of different implementations is the same, but the code structure can be different. And if we click here, we get the spec behind the example components, the design patterns for control flow. Here you also get some overview to the patterns behind uh, Melody API, and then the polling and interrupt callbacks. Those are the main two. And then things like state machine and load power are built using either of those. So we'll select a interrupts with callbacks. Um, timer in its default state kind of works with interrupts enabled. And we wanted a debug IO to visualize and verify that the timer is working as expected. So let's read through quickly what we need to do. Add a timer, select a PLIB, 100 milliseconds. We need to handle an error if there is one and then interrupt driven. So let's just look at this error potential option here. So note all of these examples give you a bit more information in the tooltip, and then also here some hints on how to handle this. OK, so here we're basically getting the information that we should move to a slower clock frequency if we get a problem. So timer. So we'll select timer two. So we will get an error, because here we only have two milliseconds as a default. And if we try and set 100 milliseconds, we get an error. So we're told to go to the PLIB and change the clock source, low frequency crystal oscillator. And here we go up to a second. And now there's no problem. OK. And we see that time interrupts are enabled by default. So 
This is the configuration of the timer. 100 milliseconds, we handled the error and interrupts are enabled. Now a couple of pins. So if we want pins, we want to come to the MPLAB shield here. And here we have our board, kit information, and schematics. So we needed a LED, RF3, and debug IO RB4. So pins, RF3, IO LED, and RB4 was IO debug. Okay, pin configuration is done. And now we need to generate code. And then at the end, there's some help here on the data visualizer setup if you need it. Yep. So when we generate code, we're going to have the MCC generator files, examples, timer example. So where do we find that? Here. So let's just go to the project first. My config, you see there's no files yet. And we generate, and here come our generated files. There's our example file. But copy into main. And just cut this. Remember, we chose timer two. And some tips about navigating the code here. So control click. And we can see the timer interface. We can skip to any other functions like initialize. And any of these items look like they should be in the header file. Um, uh, timer clock two configuration, control click. And yes, we are in the device header file now. OK, so that's about navigating code. Control save. Let's build. Control shift P, MP. P lab, C make, clean and bolt. Okay, bolt looks good. Let's try run the code and verify that it works as expected. So, run and debug. Let's use the default first. MP lab debugger, and choose our kit. OK, running, target halted at the beginning of main. So we can now continue. And our LED is blinking. So we want to verify control shift PMP lab data visualizer. So we open the data visualizer. And there is a course on uh, Microchip University uh, visual debugging with a MPLAB data visualizer. I recommend it if you're new to this tool. So here we are going to sure. display raw data on the time plot. And we're going to zoom in quite a lot and use one of the newer features, which is scope mode and a rising edge. So here we are using a positive edge trigger. And you can see the trigger over here couple of cursors. OK, 100 milliseconds. And um, yeah, so we verified this. Um, and then we're running. Now we can stop our debug session. Oopsie, now we're not running anymore. So let's create a launch.json file in PLAB debugger. OK, so here you can see the default configuration. Stop on entry is true. So we could change that, but then we'd still have to kind of launch, create a debug session. Let's look for another option. So as soon as we had a comma, we are prompted to create a new configuration. We can just accept this and then modify this one, which is now partial. So here we can see a new option, no debug. What does this mean? 
So do not start a debug session, just program the target. This is what we want to do. True. Sure. And we don't need to stop on entry because we are not entering, just programming. So this is going to be our program configuration. And this one here is going to be our debug. Okay. So what does this do? Now it gives us a debug and program configuration. Yeah. So we can select program. Yeah. Start debugging. Uh, it's not actually debugging, but which you can see programming complete. Okay. Project's running again. Back in the data visualizer. We can zoom out a bit. And you can see this is being redrawn all the time. And our application is working as expected. Okay, so uh, be sure to watch the multiple configurations um, video. We'll go beyond this. We'll start using a proximity sensor. Uh, we'll use some pseudo configurations and then just create different MCC configurations and assign those to yeah. project configurations. Thank you.